Hey guys, welcome back to Billy Ray Garage. Uh, just giving an update, being that I haven't posted a video in three weeks. Life gets in the way, been working nights, and just beat the shit. Finally have Labor Day weekend off. So today is Thursday, I just got off work this morning. So it's good to actually have a few days off. But anyway, update on the GTO. Uh, changed a couple things out. Changed this throttle positioning sensor out and I changed the spark plug wires out because these little shorty MSD guys, they seemed like they were stretched out a little bit and bending a little bit. And I have a misfire code. So being that I have a misfire code and the car sometimes struggles to start up if you let it sit for a few days, you know, it could be a spark plug wire, spark plugs, coil, injector, don't know yet. So figure I'd go the cheapest route and do the spark plugs and the wires. So like I said, they're done already. Right there, they're longer. They actually have like a 45 degree angle in them. So that's nice, there's less stress on it. The only thing is they kind of float around a little more, but that's okay. So as far as the codes I had, I will post them up on the screen. I think there's a bank one and a bank two lean code. It shouldn't be an issue with burning fuel if there was too much, because it wouldn't be lean. But it could be an injector that's just stuck or closed, who knows. But I will look into that in a little bit. Uh, also I have an ABS, I think it's an ABS traction control switch fail, short, something like that. Uh, I'll post that up on the screen too. And also a random misfire, which I just explained. So those are things that have to be kind of sorted out. Now onto the brakes. I ended up putting the new master cylinder that I got from Australia back in. I took it out, I bench bled it, and all that fun stuff. But I can't read through the ABS module, which is right there. Boop. I sent that out to be rebuilt, just in case there was something wrong with it. Uh, the guy said the internals up here were good, but he rebuilt the electronics. He didn't see anything really wrong with it, but he rebuilt it anyway. So that could still be something. But there is a light on in the dashboard for the brakes. I will show you that. Uh, it's basically like the emergency brake light that pops up in the corner. That does not go off when I put the e-brake down. And I have access to a Tech 2 scanner to do an automated bleed of the ABS module. But with that light on, you cannot do it. It even says it on the scanner. I'll see if I can dig up the video of that. Maybe I'll boop it in here so you can see what I'm talking about. But yeah, since I bench bled the brakes, I do have brakes, but the pedal is really squishy and I really want to get that squared away before I drive it, you know, two and a half hours to go get tuned because I don't want to be on a highway and then a traffic jam comes up because East Coast Supercharging is in New Jersey. New Jersey traffic sucks. So if I had to slam on the brakes and then, oh, there's no brakes anymore. That wouldn't be cool. You know, I still got an e-brake, but you don't want to go that route. Also, I have the wine lock in, but I did not wire it up yet because like I said, I've been busy and I also wanted the brakes to work before I went and did that. For obvious reasons, because if I wire it wrong, then I could boop in there, fix it up and do what I gotta do to make it work. But my theory on the brakes is, I think the ABS module is, it's just not getting a signal or something and that is causing it to I don't know how these things exactly work, but maybe it like pressurizes the system a little more. Maybe that's why there's a lot of squish in the pedal. It, it stops real quick, but the ABS is just isn't there. And uh, like with a pedal that soft, I just don't know if I could trust it to drive. Another thing that could potentially be the issue is the, the little idiot switch. Where the e-brake is, is kind of buried under the center console. Basically, it lets you know when the brake's down or up or whatever. I think it's down and it like presses a little button. But the thing is, it's it's only got one wire going to it. So I don't know how that works. I don't know if it grounds it or whatever. It's the same thing on the master cylinder. You have one wire going into one plug that goes up into the master cylinder. So I'm not sure what to think about that, but I'll dive into it a little more. But let's go into the car, start it up, see if uh, changing spark plugs. Some of the gaps were pretty big on them. I thought I gapped them. But then I pulled them out and some of them were like 55,000s and shit like that. So I dropped it down to 40. Maybe that's why 
it was kind of having a shitty ignition. Eight new spark plugs and see if that helped. And a new throttle positioning sensor because that was another alarm that came up. Uh, and that one failed as far as what the scanner was reading. It just said, it said current status fail, previous status fail. So I bought a new one. I don't know if I had to get the Holly one because this is a Holly EFI throttle body. And I went on their website and they actually sell the idle air control module there and the throttle positioning sensor. So I don't know if the stock one works with that, but I'm going to fire it up, see what I get, see if it starts up nice. Cause uh, if it does, then we're in better shape than we were, but highly doubt it. And then I'm probably going to do the screwdriver test on each, put a screwdriver up to your ear on the injector. You kind of hear it, tick, 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 tick. See what that does. But uh, definitely going to do a fuel pressure test because if the fuel pump's bad, then got to go in there and change that out. It is 20-something 20, 20 years old, so could be going bad. So anyway, let's hop in the car, start it up, and see what she sounds like. All right, guys, let's fire this bad boy up. See, like when the car's not running, pedal's firm. It doesn't push down very far. It like stops like right there. And then when I start it, it goes down way more. So I'll show you that in a second. Here we go. So that's what it does. It'll start. It'll struggle. And then it cuts out. Here we go. All right, something's up there. So let me uh, make sure I put my spark plug wires on right because it seems like I might be missing a few. Stand by. All right, guys, just double checked all the spark plug wires, make sure they were all seated right. Seems like they were, so yeah, we'll see what happens now. Uh, I cracked open the throttle body a little bit because it has a little adjuster screw. So tapped into that a little bit, see what happens. And here we go. Maybe that's what it was. Seems to be balanced out. My check engine light's not on. It's a little high revving for a thousand. Just drop down a little bit. And then the e brake. I'll step on the brakes real quick so we stop from moving, but the e brake is down. And the brake light is still on. You can't really tell because it's a little blurry, but it's that guy next to the seatbelt. So that one will not go out. There is a little switch in here. I could try and swap it out. Maybe it's just dirty. Maybe try cleaning it up. But in order to do that, I gotta rock this seat back, which I have taken out before because I've had mice living under here. Uh, whenever I get a free chance, I'll do that. Just pull the plastic trim. There's four bolts. I believe they're 15 millimeter. Seat rocks back. Shouldn't have to unplug it. Just to get into the side here and get that little switch out. I think there's only two bolts holding it on. That's what I could tell when I took this up. But yeah, as you could tell, this pedal, I'll move it to the side so you can see how much it travels. It goes down pretty far. And I do not like that. I mean, that's going a good, let's say one, two, three, four, five, six, like seven inches it's moving pretty good could have something to do with the abs but i don't know oh my third master cylinder as you guys know if you're new to the channel third master cylinder first one i drained all the fluid out to change brake lines started having an issue there no brakes and second one gave me front brakes but none of the fluid was going to the back i got that one from a junkyard and third one I ordered from Australia. It came, pedal went right to the floor, didn't stop. So I was like, maybe if I bench bleed it, bench bled it. Now the car stops, but like I said, the pedal is very squishy. Another thing with that, when I, after I bench bled, I was getting a lot more fluid flowing through freely. Like I would pump on the brakes and fluid would gush out. Like my little Snapple bottle that I used to do a one person bleed, 
that thing was filling up pretty quick. So uh, I also, at the ABS module, where the two lines come in from the master cylinder, I cracked those open, had the girlfriend step on the brakes, see if there's any air trapped in there, try and bleed that out. And did that a couple times and the result was the same. So like I said, maybe the ABS has something to do with it. Maybe when the power goes on, there's maybe there's air trapped in there. I don't know, but I think an automated bleed is something I gotta be able to accomplish. That little douchebag bag brake light is screwing me. It's funny my little seatbelt guy went away. I wonder why that is. This car seems happy right there. Let me play with it a little bit. it down the rpms went down to like 950. see what happens when we turn this guy all the way let's rev it up see what happens give it a little throttle see what happens I mean, it sounds like it's all right. Then it just wants to stall out. That, that, that was happening even when I was driving it around the block. I think it's because it's not tuned. It seems to be happier. I mean, there's only one way to find out I'd drive it around the block, but I'd have to do a little uh, car shuffleboard out there. I don't feel like doing it. I don't feel like doing it this second. But ultimately, I just wanted to give you guys an update on what was going on. Uh, life got in the way. Sometimes when you work for a utility company, your life does not matter. It is needs of the business and the electrical customers. So if you want to make a fuck ton of money and have no life, work for a utility company. So that's about all I got to say about this so far. If you guys have any ideas, uh, if you look at the codes that I posted earlier in the video, Maybe you could translate, especially the, the traction control ABS one, because I brought it to a shop and they had no clue what to do with it. Uh, may have to bring it to a dealership because they got all the shit to figure out these problems. Anyway, as soon as I uh, get some progress here, I will post a video on it and hopefully get the line lock, get it tuned. At this point, it's wishful thinking, but so thanks for watching guys. Like, subscribe, comment, you know the deal. And I will see you guys in the next one. This shit's still pretty good though. Get my voltage -y. Got my like almost 50 pounds of oil pressure, so that's not an issue. Later kids.